Casting a flexible foam prop with a urethane skin. In this tutorial we're going to cover the basic process of casting a flexible foam uh, body part using a translucent urethane skin. Now to show the basic process we're going to use a gel 25 life cast mold that we made in our life casting 102 DVD. So if you're unfamiliar with that process be sure to check out some of our life casting videos or get our life casting 102 DVD. Now for our urethane skin we're going to use a new translucent uh, urethane rubber that we have called FP15. Now the FP15B needs to be shaken up before use. Anytime you see shake before use, be sure to do that. And the FP series skin materials, the FP means fast production. And all of these skin materials have about a four to five minute working time and a one to two hour demold depending on uh, the ambient temperature. And these are all translucent, so they're easy to pigment to get a good flesh tone. And uh, they're also available in several A values or shore A values. So uh, you can find all of those on our casting rubber section in our web store. So be sure to check that out. We have a lot of new casting rubbers on our web store. So check out that section. I'll put a link in the video description. And I'll also put a link to the additive section, the urethane additive section. Because one of the key components we'll need for this process is some polyfiber. And polyfiber is a thickening agent for or any kind of oil-based materials. Now we're going to start by mixing up a small batch of the FP15 and this product is mixed one-to-one -one by weight and we're just going to need a small batch. This is about eight ounces of A and about eight ounces of B. Now I'm measuring this by grams and typically uh, grams are a little bit more precise than ounces. It's much easier to measure that on a, on a gram scale. So this is about 300 grams of part A and 300 grams of part B. Now, because this is a translucent rubber, we want to take care to maintain that translucency. Now, remember that this is a fairly fast setting rubber. So with four to five minutes working time, it's a good idea if you're new to this kind of fast setting system, set a, uh, an iPhone timer or uh, just a regular kitchen timer to four minutes or so. And that way you can keep track of your working time and uh, you don't run out of critical working time uh, right at a critical point in your application. And we're mixing up just enough here, just enough rubber to put in a thin skin all over the inside of our mold. And that's one of those things you'll pick up by uh, experience of working with various size molds about what size batch will give you a nice, thin, even skin all over the inside of the mold. And sometimes on some of our molds we have around the shop, we'll write in permanent marker on the outside of the mold how many grams it takes to either fill that mold or create a skin thickness on the inside of the mold. Now we're going to add our thickener. So the polyfiber thickener is just added a handful at a time until we achieve the thickness that we want. Uh, I just add a handful, stir that in, and if it's not the thickness I want, I just add another handful. Um, this is one of those things, the polyfiber is inert, so you can't add too much except that it will make it unworkable. Obviously, if you add so much that you have more polyfiber than uh, liquid material, it's going to be so thick that it'll be difficult to even maneuver with a brush. So we want to find a happy medium here of just runny enough that it's easy to spread, but not so, uh, not so runny that it pools in the mold, and also not so thick that it traps air bubbles when we're applying it. Now I've added a little bit of our flesh tone. This is our medium flesh tone and just a very small amount of that. That was just a few drops we put in there. And what I'm using is the, the white that we naturally get from the polyfiber plus the uh, flesh tone gives us a very nice fair skin tone. And you see there that when we're brushing it in, we have a nice uh, mixture that runs just a little bit, but it's not so, uh, not so runny that it's going to pool in low areas of the mold. Uh, if we do that, then we'll wind up spending the entire working time chasing that around the inside of the mold. So you want it uh, thick enough that it's going to stay up on the sides, on a vertical side of the mold. Uh, but again, not so thick that you wind up trapping air bubbles as you're trying to force that into the detail of the mold. Now we want our skin to be as even as possible, but more important than an even skin is just a complete skin. So if we miss any spots, it's a good idea to mix up another small batch and just hit those additional areas. 
and make sure you don't have any bare spots where you'll have foam showing through. And the reason for that is foam will be opaque, whereas this is going to be a translucent skin. So any opaque foam showing through will kill that realism of our skin. Now, as soon as that skin gels, we're ready to move on to pouring foam. And by gel, it doesn't have to be completely set. It just needs to be gelled and unworkable. And then we're ready to pour our foam. And that way we get a really good bond between our foam and our skin on the surface. Now for our foam backing, we're going to mix up some of our new TC-296 foam. And the FR on that foam series, that is a flame resistant foam. This is a real important formula for those of you uh, making props for theme parks and haunted houses where a flame rating may be required. So we're measuring out our part B and then we're going to add some of the flesh tone to the B. With this we don't have near as much working time. You've got to move very fast with uh, any kind of flexible foam series like this. So we're going to mix in the flesh tone first. And that way we have the, since we're using the same flesh tone we used on the skin, then uh, that gives a nice background color to our translucent skin. Now I was planning ahead here and added just a little bit more flesh tone because uh, when foam expands, it lightens up that color that you've added to it. So I'm adding just a little bit to preempt it, that uh, whitening effect we get when the foam expands. Now the TC-296, this is a foam that's uh, a 2 to 1 mix ratio, 2 parts B to 1 part A, or 100 parts B to 50 parts A. Uh, it's a very simple ratio, easy to do on a gram scale. Uh, just basically remember 2 to 1 mix ratio. And remember, foams, flexible foams are fast, especially uh, the 296 and some of the sister products to this are very fast setting foams. So be prepared to work quickly, but that also means you have a, a part that's ready to demold that much faster. Now, anytime you're mixing up a foam system like this, you want to make sure, if you've watched some of our other videos, you know time is of the essence. So you want to have someone help you or have that mold ready to go so you don't have any wasted time between mixing up that foam and spreading it out inside the mold. As you saw earlier, I've got a chip brush ready and I'm going to use a wide chip brush. As soon as I mix up this foam, I'm going to pour it out inside my mold against that skin that I put brushed in, and I'm going to spread that out with a wide brush before it starts fully expanding. Now, in the future, we'll show this on a much more appropriate mold. I was uh, in a hurry to show off this technique after Transworld, so I grabbed the uh, first LifeCast mold I found to uh, show this technique. But in the future, we'll probably demo this using a uh, severed head mold or something along those lines. Uh, because it, it does make for a little messy casting process with it coming out the neck and the, uh, the abdomen there. But you see that it's still fairly easy to uh, maintain an even foam on the inside, just brushing that out as soon as we pour it into the mold. And we had some thin spots there, so I'm going to mix up a second batch and do the same thing. Pour it in and then spread it out with the brush. Now one of the nice things about this technique is the foam generates a fair amount of heat when it's uh, expanding and curing. And what that does, that additional heat actually helps set that uh, skin that we brushed into the surface of the mold that much faster. So you'll find that typically as soon as the uh, foam is cured, you're ready to demold your part and make another one. Now typically the demold time for this particular foam is only about 20 minutes, so this cures really quick. As soon as it has handling strength, we'll be ready to peel off that outside uh, gel 25 mold and demold our part. So again, uh, the skin takes about four to five minutes to apply. Our foam, the whole process of uh, pouring in these two layers of foam took maybe another 10 minutes and then 20 minutes on top of that. So it's a relatively fast turnaround time for making uh, pretty realistic body parts and props like this. And now we're ready to demold our part. And again, uh, since we used a Gel 25 uh, LifeCast mold, we don't have to use any release, so we don't have any release to clean off in order to paint our finished part. And that's real important because anytime you're casting parts like this that you know are going to be painted, you want to be very careful that you don't do anything that's going to make the painting process that much more difficult, like release agents that are very difficult to wash off. And now we have our urethane skin bonded to our flexible foam underneath. And we have our part ready to paint. 
Now, I always like to paint as soon as possible to get as good a bond as possible to that original part. So I'm using some of our new uh, Flex Paint. This is just a clear paint base. And we're going to pigment that using our Polycolor pigments. Now we're going to start by dispensing a little bit of the paint base into a disposable cup here. We're just using a little wax coated Dixie cup and we just poured a couple of ounces there and we're going to add a couple of drops of brown and a couple of drops of red. And we're just going to get a, I'll oh, make that three drops of red. And we're just going to mix that up to uh, kind of a reddish brown to add a little bit more uh, color to our part and we're going to airbrush this on. One of the nice things about the flex paint is it comes in a nice airbrush consistency. So it's very easy to apply and we're going to apply it using the world's cheapest airbrush and I, I mean that. That is probably not hyperbole. We're just going to pour that into this little uh, uh, airbrush bottle and spray that on. These are terrible airbrushes but they're great for applying base coats and spraying super baldies and things like that um, and you will not have any grief when you destroy them and you will destroy them. So we're going to test out our spray pattern really quick on a clean piece of white paper and then we're going to go to town uh, adding some reds, uh, just that dark red to add some life to our piece. And this is by no means a comprehensive airbrush tutorial. So for that, you will need to go elsewhere. But I just mainly wanted to show the basic process of putting that into a, uh, an airbrush and how this can be sprayed out. And these kind of airbrushes, like I said, they're great throwaway airbrushes for simple airbrush jobs like this. Now the flex paint is fairly fast drying, so you can move pretty quick uh, applying layers of airbrush colors and then also going in and doing detail work with brushes. And again, here I'm using one of the world's cheapest uh, paint brushes to add some color around the belly button and other areas. So there you have the basic use of a translucent urethane skin brushed into a mold and then uh, backed up with flexible foam. And overall, this is a fairly simple uh, casting method and a fairly easy painting method to make realistic body parts and props. Obviously, this could be used for other uh, props other than body parts, but the translucent nature of the FP15 lends itself to things like translucent flesh tones. And there you have it, a finished foam prop made with a flexible urethane skin and flexible foam backing, ready for YouTube censorship. And of course, you can find all of the products on our web store. The FP Series skin materials are in our casting rubber section, and the TC-296 foam can be found in our foam section. So I'll put links in the video description to the new products, as well as to the additive section, so you can find the new flesh tone as well as the polyfiber thickener. And you can find all of that at brickintheyard.com. And if you want to see some of the uh, future content that we have planned for YouTube, be sure to check us out on Instagram. You can uh, I'll put a link in the video description, but you can also find it on the home page of our website. Be sure to check out our Instagram page for lots of progress pictures of things leading up to our YouTube videos and a lot of stuff that doesn't make it into our YouTube videos. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out some of the Gel 25 live casting videos so you can see how we made that first mold we used in this video.